you're ready to praise God, would you put your hands together and clap them like this? There you go. Hey, let's lift up our voice. Let's sing. Let's, let's uh, sing the praises of our God who has been amazing. Lord, we have come to praise you. We have come to worship you. We've come to lift up our voice.
clouds that sail in heaven along. Oh, praise Him. trying to remind myself and, and sometimes remind you all about the importance of, of pressing pause on, on the things that you got going on in your life because it, it's a perfect example. Um, you're just running around doing things that you, you normally do and stuff that you're responsible for and it can, it can have you like, like this. <laughs> and, and, and I'm sorry that I kept rushing what I was doing here on the piano. I was probably throwing you off. Sorry about that. But I felt like like rushing and just rushing on the beat. I'm like, man, is it, just calm down. <laughs> and this is this is the this is the point of this night where it's at in the week. Just chill out. Just relax. Just God is good. And you you don't gotta worry about anything. Um, if you have some sort of anxiety, just tell that thing to just, just relax. Just settle down. Sit back in the pocket. That's what, we, that's what you should tell me, Nick. Just sit back in the pocket and just relax. Everything's going to be all right. God is in control of everything. God is in control. He's in control of your finances. He's in control of your health. He's in control of your family. He's in control of it all. So the only thing you got to do is just Lift up your eyes to heaven. Lift up your hands and say, God, you are worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be exalted. You got everything under control. And I'm just going to sit back in the pocket. Because you can't hold a, a groove if you don't have a pocket. I don't know if you knew that. So tonight, I want you to just press, press pause on anything that's just rattling around in your head. And let's just say, this is a real simple song. You are good. That's it. You are, just, just tell God you are good. You are good. That's all you need to do right now. Press pause on whatever's going on. God is in control. The funny thing about those things is that as soon as you leave, 
They'll be right there waiting for you. But God is in control. God is in control. We thank you.
we just worship you today. There's a uh, passage in Deuteronomy that I, I have saved on my phone. I can't remember what chapter. I can find that notification button. So that's on there. Yeah. But Moses says, What nation has a God so near to them as the Lord our God is near to us? And what nation has a God so righteous and so good as the Lord our God is to us? And it's this little reminder. No one on earth has what you have in Jesus Christ. No one on earth can give what God can give. No one, not a thing, not any being, not any creature, not any entity can give what the Lord our God can give you. And so I just want us to continue that posture of worship. And I think that's what you need to hear today. The Lord our God is with you. The Lord our God is with you, and there is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. So, Jesus, we give thanks to you. Jesus, we just give our worship to you. We bow down at your feet. The breaker of our chains, our freedom, our redeemer. And all the world is yours. Oh, 
praise you. Jesus, we thank you for what you have done in our lives. Now we ask that as we open up our hearts that you would speak to us tonight through your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 You can have a seat. So good to see you. Take a Bible, please, and we're going to jump right into Jeremiah chapter 1. That'll be page 646 if you're using uh, an evergreen Bible. <clears throat> so glad you're here. And uh, last time we were together, we started in Jeremiah 1, and I wanted to finish uh, there, and I don't know where the Lord will take us next. I think through more of Jeremiah, but don't hold me to that. So in Jeremiah 1, there, there it's an incredible unfolding of a calling and a, 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 a sovereign positioning of a guy named Jeremiah. And, um, but what is in there is also a pattern, I think, that we can apply to our lives. So I'm, gonna, I'm pulling out some things there that you go, well, wait, this is really this one guy and this piece of history that God called to do this crazy thing. And if you know much about Jeremiah, it was a, it was a really hard calling. And uh, one that I... Invite the Lord continually not to give me. Uh, <clears throat> so yes, it's a it, Jeremiah one and in the book of Jeremiah is a is a description of Jeremiah's journey, but it's also a I believe prescription for how you and I can process toward uh, life and freedom in our soul by the power of God to deliver us. So in the verses we're looking at tonight, there's a there's a, it's, it's one of the models I use for uh, pastoral counseling to help people move forward in some difficult parts of their life. So I want to walk you through that, and we're reading verses 4 through 12, but I just want to, I wrote this down in my Bible, David, so you might already have everything you need tonight with this line. You can't be in the groove if you don't have a pocket. So, uh, that, so uh, I was... I was moved beyond measure with that, with that line, and, and so my spirit's full. But if you have room for more, uh, let's look at Jeremiah 1. I just love that. You can't be in the groove if you don't have a pocket. I actually understood every bit of what you were saying. I love musicians. So Jeremiah 1, um, let's... Go to verse 4, and we're going to read through verse 12, okay? So if you're able and willing to stand for this, that would be awesome. And uh, I want you to, uh, I hope you have the text in front of you, and uh, keep it there as we walk through just a few minutes of this conversation. So 
the call of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 4. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Now verse 8 is where we're going to pick up because we walked through the first few verses last time. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and he touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down and destroy, and overthrow, to build, and to plant. The word of the Lord came to me, what do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. That's the word of God. You can be seated. Leave your Bible open there. And uh, just a little refresher, if you weren't here last time we met, or you've slept since then. Uh, Jeremiah, you know, this is, what, this is what God would say to you, okay? This is, this is God speaking to you. Right now with all of your uh, baggage, all of your circumstances, all of your humanity, conditions, strengths, weaknesses, all of it, he's saying to you, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. This is absolutely true. Psalm 139 tells us that, that before a day of your life came to be, every one of your days was written in God's book that he has been involved in that. So this is true of you. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And um, I set you apart, and I appointed you. I believe that's true for every one of us. And then this is the response of Jeremiah. Alas, sovereign Lord, I'm too young. Remember we talked about what would you fill in that blank with? I am too, sorry, Lord, I can't do this. I am too what? Right? And we wrestled with that. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm too young. Do not give me your excuse. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Now, here we're picking this up. Now, we're talking about dealing with the the complexities of the human soul. We're talking about dealing with uh, everything you are, everything you've been through, uh, everything you hope to be, all 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 the stuff inside you. This is a pathway for us to find God's power to find freedom, and to live a powerful life uh, through his strength in us. And here's how it goes. First of all, do not be afraid. I believe that fear is the core emotion of every human being. It is, it is the core problem. When Adam and Eve partook of the fruit in the garden and God showed up and he said, Adam, where are you? What have you done? You remember what he said? I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. This is the human experience. We are afraid because we are exposed, and so we hide. And this is God's way to deal with this. He says, do not be afraid. Why? Here's why you don't need to be afraid. Man, I I think God wants to speak to your fear right now. Why? Because I am with you. This is what he says. I'm with you, I will rescue you. So even if you blow it, I'll rescue you. I'm with you, I will rescue you. And then uh, I, he put his hand on my mouth and said, I have put my words in your mouth. Now here I want you to think about the word of God. God is saying to you, I've given you my word. I've given you the living word. Jesus died on a cross for you. I've given you the word of God. I'm putting this in you and you don't need to be afraid. Why? Because I'm with you, because I'll rescue you, because the word is in you, and the word is going to empower you. So today, here's what he says, I appoint you. Now watch this. I appoint you over nations and kingdoms, and he gives some help here. Now, you say, well, God hasn't appointed me over nations and kingdoms. No, but here's what God has done. He has appointed you to have the authority of God to govern over you. God has not given you the authority to govern others, unless he puts you in a position where you have authority, which you would steward for a time, it's not yours, but he has given you an authority that is yours, and that authority is for you to govern over you. 
this kingdom. He's given you authority to govern over the enemy against you. When Jesus uh, established the church, when he said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. And he said, the next thing he said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind will already be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose will already be loose in heaven. You have authority from God to govern with authority and fearlessness and confidence over your life. You are not a victim. You are not powerless. You are empowered by Almighty God. He is with you. He will rescue you. He's put his word inside of you. And you are empowered by God. You're appointed by God to govern right here. Okay? You can do this. You can find your way to freedom. You can overcome. You can become. Why? Because God is with you. Because he will rescue you. Because he put his word in you. And he has appointed you to govern. To have authority. And so, how, so what do I do with this authority? I've got, here's my life. Here's, you know, I'm 57. Some of you are a lot older. Some of you are a lot younger. Okay, what's your story? I'm, I'm this old. I've been through this. I have these sin issues. I have this scar tissue. I have these uh, horrible memories. I have this shame. I have this wound. I have this bitterness. I have this uh, enemy. I have this issue. Here's what he would say to you. I've appointed you. You have authority to do six things. Okay, look at them. They are to uproot, to tear down, to destroy, to overthrow. Four of them are destructive. Then the last two are to plant and to build. Now, this is interesting to me because what I find true in my own life and, and in all these years of uh, pastoral care with people is that we have a whole lot more to deconstruct than we have to construct. We've got a lot of stuff we've got to get right. Okay, We have lies we have believed. We have uh, patterns we've established. We have thought patterns that are not biblical. They're not aligned with God's word. We have belief systems. We have relational things. We have, uh, we have strongholds. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against what? Against the knowledge of God. So what happens in our lives, we talk about uh, spiritual formation, that God wants to help us be spiritually formed. And I like the word spiritual reformation better because from the time you were in the womb, you were being formed. And a lot of that formation was wrong. It was bruised. It was inadequate. It was, uh, it was uh, contaminated. Some of it was even evil as you grow up. And what God wants to do with his word in your life, with the power of God in your life, with the redemptive presence of Christ, with the authority of the scriptures, what God wants to do in you is reform your spirit, your soul. And here's what that pass is going to take. This is hard work, okay? This is hard work. We're not gonna, you're not going to complete this journey in the next 25 minutes tonight. Uh, it's going to be a process, but here's the process, okay? There are some things in you. There are some things in your heart and in your mind and your soul that need to be uprooted. Not cut off, not trimmed, but pulled up by the roots. They're deeply in you. You've held them for a long time. These are perceptions of the self. These might be uh, beliefs you've embraced, lies you've been told that you have now attached to yourself. It may be uh, habits and hang-ups and hurts, but you, they are deep. They are planted in you. And you're going to have to, by the authority of God, because he's with you, you do not be afraid. You stare at that, and you grab it by the roots, and you pull it up. You're going to have to tear down. Now, uh, some, th some things you uproot, some things you tear down, because they've been built over time. Um, here's a classic example when, um, when a person who is an addict begins to live uh, free from their addiction, it brings crisis to the home because everybody has adjusted to how to live with an addict. And so what you have to do is you have to tear down the way you've been doing things so that you can start to plant and build the right way to do things because you've so adjusted to the dysfunction that you've built some things. This also would be pertinent to strongholds in your life. Okay, Some things you have to overthrow. Overthrow sounds to me like a, 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 a warfare, um, a, an external 
authority or power to influence over you. That could be a relationship. It could be a spirit thing. And then the last one is to uh, destroy, which is to kill. Just to, to kill. That word destroy means to, to kill it. So here's what I want you to think about in your journal. I hope you're still bringing a journal every week. Um, I believe God is going to do some documentable things in your life, and, and I want you to document them in your journal. So, uh, man, bring, bring a journal. What in my life needs to be pulled up by the roots? I thought I killed it. it you ever tried to kill blackberries? It, it can't be done. I have, man, at our last house, we had these blackberry spots, and I would, and when you try, you know, you let them grow, and you try to get after them with a, a, a brush cutter or a weed, weed whacker, you just end up bleeding everywhere, and you can't kill them. They have to be pulled up by their roots and removed. What in your life needs to be pulled up by the roots and removed? What in your life needs to be overthrown? What in your life needs to be pulled down? You know, the, the 2 Corinthians parallel, imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. You might have some thinking patterns that have exalted themselves against the knowledge of God where you think that this is so powerful even God can't deliver you. And you, you, you um, underestimate the power of God because you overestimate the power of this. And it needs to be pulled down. And what things in your life need to be absolutely killed? It brings me to the soil parable of Jesus. Speaking about, you know, some soil had rocks. Some soil was packed down because it had been a pathway. Some soil had weeds. And the weeds there were riches, pleasures, and the worries of this life. Perhaps there's something there for you. But after you do the destruction, and it's four out of six destruction... Then you have to do some construction, and that is to build and to plant. You have to build new thinking patterns. You have to build new habits. You have to plant new truth. You have to do some aggressive construction. Romans chapter 12 tells us to be uh, no longer conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind, okay? And, and uh, we offer our bodies a living sacrifice, and, and then we, and we are renewed by the but we're transformed by the renewal of our mind. Then we're able to understand God's will, is what it goes on to say. Well, the renewal of your mind is a construction term. It actually is the remodeling of your mind. And the image is like remodeling some, a room in your house. You're ripping out some walls, and you're building some new walls. And here's the thing. We keep wondering, why aren't I getting better? Why aren't I overcoming this sin? Why can't I get over this hurt? Why am I not moving beyond this wound? Why am I stuck in 1976 with this issue that happened to me? Why can't I be free? And the issue is you have to kill, pull up by the roots, destroy and tear down some things there, and you need to plant and build new things. you got to rip some walls out and build some new ones. And this is an intentional, the only way to do it is in alignment with the Word of God. The only way to be effective there is to believe that what the Bible says about you is true. That the sins you committed have in fact been forgiven. That he has thrown them into the sea of forgetfulness. Uh, prison chaplain in Montana, he would always say this. You know, God has taken your sin, he threw it in the sea of forgetfulness, and he put up a sign that says no fishing. Because you go back in there and fish out your sin and feel guilty about it all over again. He has thrown them as far as the east is from the west. And he remembers them no more. But you're still remembering them. It's time for you to align your thoughts with the Word of God. It's time for you to plant the truth in your heart. It's time for you to build walls. Some of those walls will be boundaries that protect you from people who would hurt you. Some of those things, this is the hard work of, we call it recovery. I, I'm talking to my son the other day. I, I think every human being is an addict. I think that God wired us for addiction. So that our heart would yearn and search and cry out and find its way to God. Because the only one who can satisfy is God. And in us is that vacancy. And we'll fill it with pleasure. We'll fill it with people. We'll fill it with money. We'll, we'll fill it with stuff. And it needs to be torn down and rooted out and destroyed. And then rebuilt with what matters to God, what, what will set you free. It's the most ironic, counterintuitive thing. 
The pathway to freedom is absolute slavery to God. That's freedom. So we have to rebuild and and restore. Now, I want to finish. There's a lot of work there. I mean, I just gave you a a walk through a passage of Scripture that literally, depending on how deep the well is of your stuff, you might be digging for a long time. This is a process. What I've found in my own life is that when I think I've, man, I'm, you know, that stuff's uprooted and, and that stuff's torn down and that stuff's destroyed. And then when I'm ready, the Lord says, yeah, but what about this other thing? There will always be another thing. And he's working us. He's reforming us. It's awesome. And it can be really hard work. If you're lazy, you'll never know the freedom God has for you. If you're negligent of this word, you'll never know the freedom God has for you. If you avoid the difficult place with God, if you run and hurry and avoid the quiet place, if you avoid deep thought, if you avoid wrestling with God's word, you're never going to be free. But God says, I've appointed you to govern. So get to work governing. I want to finish with just reading Isaiah 55 to you. uh, Because he says, uh, in fact, I I meant to go on a little further here. Um, Here's what he says in verse 11. Uh, The word of the Lord came to me and said, Jeremiah, what do you see? And he said, I see the branch of an almond tree. Uh, The almond tree, the almond means, uh, uh, what is the word? It it means the first to bloom. Uh, I'm I'm told, I don't know this, but I'm told that almond trees are the first to bloom in the spring. And what God is saying here, what do you see? I see the blooming of new life, and this happens. This is the first thing. God is going to bring blooming to your life. And then then he says, uh, you have seen correctly, for I am watching... I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. So that leads me to the promise in Isaiah 55. Listen to this. Where do I want to start? I want to start at verse uh, 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down, listen to this, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word. Listen to this. That goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy, you'll be led forth in peace, the mountains and the hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Instead of thorn bushes will grow the juniper, and instead of briars the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign. That will endure forever. This is God's promise over you. Do not be afraid. For the Lord is with you. He will rescue you. And his word will not return void. You get into the word of God. And you let the word of God get into you. And you uproot. And you tear down. And you destroy. And you plant and you build. And God is going to walk you to freedom. So here's how we're going to finish tonight. I've asked the team to uh, lead us right now into a a song that celebrates this promise from God, okay, that he will not stop. Uh, He's going to climb every mountain. He's going to remove every barrier. He is coming to set you free. And then we're going to go to our time of prayer. So um, I want you not to move until we sing this song, and then you can, you know, dive into your prayer time. If you have a list already, you've come ready to pray, you just do that. If not, here's what I would ask you to do. Reflect on what needs to be uprooted and torn down and killed and destroyed in your life. What needs to be planted and built. And if you want to use the microphones, and we have a tall microphone and an under tall microphone. Uh, That way, if you're one of the under tall people, you don't have to 
stand on your toes to use the microphone. The microphone is for one of two purposes. It's to come and just read the scriptures over us. Scriptures that might speak uh, promise and deliverance and restoration and the word of God over us. Or it is for you to begin to ask God to help you uproot a certain thing or to destroy a certain thing or to pull down a certain thing or to plant a new thing or to build a new thing. And we're going to agree, those of us who are, who are engaged at that moment are going to agree with you in prayer that God will help you to uproot, tear down, destroy, or that he will help you to plant and to build a new thing. Okay, so that's going to be the vulnerability part of that. Uh, there's no pressure at all. If nobody comes to the mics tonight, we'll be fine. But that's what the mics are for. If you want someone to pray with you, you come on that side. Otherwise, the west, the, the, the west of the womb is yours. You can uh, sit, walk, kneel, pray, whatever. Okay? So let's sing this song together. Why don't you stand with me? Let's sing this song together. And let me pray for you before we do. And then, man, I want you to go after God tonight. By the way, January 1st, New Year's Day is a Wednesday. We will be in here at 6.30 that night. And we're kicking off 21 days of fasting and prayer. And I'm counting on you. I was thinking about this. Probably our Sunday morning crowd, I'm guessing about 30% of those folks will do this with us. 21 days of fasting and prayer. Uh, we're going to have resources for you to have different kinds of fast, so you can pick the one that's for you. Uh, but I'm expecting all of you to be in on that. I'm counting on you to lead the way for God to speak to us as we chase hard after him in those 21 days, okay? So let me pray for you, and then we're going to sing this song, and then I think you know what to do. Lord, I am so grateful for the delivering power of Jesus Christ. I'm so grateful for the presence and power of your Holy Spirit that sets us free. God, I'm thankful for your word that never returns void but accomplishes the purpose for which you sent it. I'm grateful that we don't have to be afraid, that we've been appointed by God to have authority to govern over our lives in your presence and in your power. So, Lord, I pray tonight that you would give us ears to hear, that you would speak to us, that as we begin to cry out to you, that you'll give us clarity of thought, that you'll show us by your Holy Spirit where the, the bondage is, where the stronghold is, where the weeds are, and, and how to build and what to build and what to plant. Help us, God, that we might be more formed into the image of your beloved Son. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's celebrate for a minute first, and then we're going to get after it. your foe, still your love for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it. 
it all for me You have been so, so There's no shadow you won't lie. 